So this expression that we just calculated, this is by far the longest piece of solving this whole, this whole problem. But this piece that we just solved here just basically gave us step one. We have just found this integral of our trial wave function or the complex conjugate of our trial wave function times the Hamiltonian applied to our trial wave function. What that means now is that we've got these other four steps, but they are much shorter than, than this first one. And so the next one that we're going to do is this step two, where we're just going to calculate the complex conjugate of our trial wave function times our trial wave function, and we're going to evaluate it over all space. And so what that looks like is we have this integral between 0 and 2 pi, the integral of 0 and pi, the integral of 0 to infinity, because this is our integral over all space. We have our complex conjugate of our trial wave function times our trial wave function times the volume element. If I start to write in the individual pieces, I have between the integral between 0 and 2 pi. And to that, I have multiplied by d phi. We have our integral between 0 and pi, and this is my sine theta d theta, so this is our other angular component. And then our final piece, this is our integral between 0 and infinity. This is our piece where we have our complex conjugate of our wave function, negative alpha r squared, times our trial wave function, e raised to the negative alpha r squared. We have the rest of our volume element, r squared dr. In each of these pieces, we know many of the answers already. This first piece, we know we're going to get a 2 pi. The second piece, we know we're going to get a 2. And in this final piece, this is just going to be the integral of between 0 and infinity of r squared e to the negative uh, 2 alpha r squared. Because again, I'm multiplying together these two uh, exponential terms. And that is going to be multiplied by a dr. So moving forward, 2 pi times 2 gives us a 4 pi. And for this integral, we're going to again refer to an integral table, which gives us a solution that is 1 over 2 times alpha times 2 raised to the power of 2 times pi over 2 alpha all square root. And if I simplify this expression, what we end up with is pi over 2 times alpha raised to the power of 3 over 2. So this solution that we just calculated this is now the results or the finished part of step two. So if we go back up to our strategy, we've just completed step two. We've now completed step one. And so the next part is to solve for what the energy is of this trial wave function. And so how we're going to calculate that energy is basically all we need to do is to just take this term that we found from step one and divide it by this term that we just found for step two. And so if I write that out completely, what that looks like is, so this is for step three, the energy of this trial wave function is just equal to the integral over all space of my complex conjugate times my Hamiltonian applied to my trial wave function divided by the integral over all space of the complex conjugate of my trial wave function times my trial wave function we just calculated these two values, and so we're just going to substitute them in. So what we have is 3 times h bar squared times pi raised to the power of 3 halves divided by 4 times mu times the square root of 2 alpha minus the elementary charge squared divided by 4 times epsilon naught alpha. And this is all divided by pi over 2 alpha raised to the power of 3 halves. Continuing to simplify this expression, what we're left with is 3 h bar squared times 2 alpha divided by 4 times mu. From that I'm going to be subtracting off this 2 alpha over pi raised to the power of 3 halves multiplied by the elementary charge e squared divided by 4 epsilon naught alpha. And basically how I went from this last step to this current step is that when we divide by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying it by the inverse of it. 
and that's where basically this term came from, where my pi raised to the power of 3 halves disappeared to, and where this 2 alpha came from. And if I continue to simplify, what we end up with is our final solution, or the final part to this, is we have our 3 h bar squared alpha divided by 2 times mu, and from that I'm going to be subtracting off the elementary charge squared times the square root of alpha divided by the square root of 2 times epsilon naught pi raised to the power of 3 halves. We've now done all this work so that we can get to this point that we've just calculated, which is we now have an energy that defines, or for our trial wave function, phi. And we can finally now apply the variational principle, where the variational principle states that the energy of our trial wave function phi is going to be greater than or equal to our actual wave function, or the energy of our actual system. And so we're trying to find the ground state energy of some of our hydrogen atom in this case. And so what we're going to do at this point is we have one variational parameter, and it's this alpha, which you can see here and here. And so if we minimize this energy, then if we chose a good trial wave function, then we should approximate what the ground state energy is of the actual wave function, in this case for the hydrogen atom. And that's basically what our fourth step is. Our fourth step here is minimize E5 with respect to alpha. And so how we do that is just like we do to anything that we want to minimize, we take the derivative of it and we set it equal to zero. So here we're taking the derivative with respect to alpha because alpha is our only variational parameter in this case. Everything else in that expression that I have in the red square is a constant. Alpha is the only thing that we can vary and it was the only term that we could vary in our trial wave function. And so in this case, we're gonna take the derivative with respect to alpha and that's of this term, this three h bar squared alpha divided by two mu minus e squared times the square root of alpha divided by the square root of 2 epsilon naught pi raised to the power of 3 halves. And then in order to minimize it, we're just going to set that expression to 0. And once we do that, then we'll find out what is the alpha that minimizes this energy. And from there, we can then calculate what is the lowest energy possible by this trial wave function. So applying the power rule to this for the first term, at least, well, here I've got, I'm taking the derivative of some function that um, only has an alpha in it. And so alpha raised to the power of 1, power rule means that I'm going to be left with alpha raised to the power of 0. So for this first term, I'm going to get 3h bar squared divided by 2 times mu. In the second term, I have a bunch of constants, e squared divided by the square root of 2, epsilon naught, pi raised to the power of 3 halves. And I just have the square root of alpha term. And so what that means is that I bring down a 1 half, and I'm going to get alpha raised to the power of negative 1 half, according to the product, or the, the, the power rule. And again, I'm just going to set that all equal to 0. And so from here, I can then rearrange. I'm going to keep my 3h bar squared over 2 mu on my left-hand side. I'm going to move the second term to the right-hand side. This minus becomes a plus. And so if I simplify, I'm going to get 2 pi raised to the power of 3 halves on the bottom times epsilon naught times the square root of alpha. And on top, I still have this elementary charge squared. I'm then going to move my alpha to the left-hand side and move all these constants to the right-hand side. So I'm going to get the square root of alpha is equal to 2 times mu times the elementary charge squared. And that's going to be divided by 3 h bar squared times 2 pi raised to the power of 3 halves times epsilon naught. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take the square of both sides. And so that gives me alpha is equal to 4 times mu squared e raised to the power of 4. And that's going to be divided by 9 h bar raised to the power of 4, 2 pi raised to the power of 3 epsilon naught squared. And so that leaves me as my final answer for my alpha is equal to mu squared e raised to the power of 4 divided by 18 h bar raised to the power of 4 pi cubed epsilon naught squared. 
And so now what we have here is a value for alpha which minimizes the energy of our trial wave function. And so if we take this alpha and we stick that back into this expression, which was for the energy of our trial wave function phi, then we're going to find the minimum value of this trial wave function phi. If we go back up to our checklist, we can see that we've done step four. We've minimized um, our trial wave function energy with respect to alpha, which is what we just did a second ago by doing that derivative. And so then we're on this final step, this last step five, which is determine the minimum energy of our trial wave function based on this alpha. And so again, that means that I'm just going to take this value for alpha and just stick it into this expression that I have for my energy for my trial wave function. And so if I do just that, then what that means is I'm going to have the minimum energy for my trial wave function, and that's going to be equal to, well, I have this first term, this 3h bar squared over 2 mu, and then I had my term for alpha. So I'm going to have mu squared e to the 4 divided by 18 pi cubed epsilon naught squared h bar raised to the power of 4. So then I'm going to be subtracting the second term, which had a bunch of constants, e squared over the square root of 2 times epsilon naught pi raised to the power of 3 halves. And then I had the square root of a, which is what it was multiplied by. So I have the square root of a, which is mu squared e to the 4 divided by 18 pi cubed epsilon naught squared h raised to the power of 4. And from here, it's just simplification. So I've got, again, my, minimal, my minimum trial wave function energy, and that's equal to mu times e to the 4 divided by 12 pi cubed epsilon naught squared h bar squared. From that, I'm going to be subtracting off mu times e raised to the power of 4 divided by 6 epsilon naught squared pi cubed h bar raised to the power of 2. I'm just going to make a slight correction because there's a three halves up there. And from this now, I can now actually subtract these two terms from each other. So I'm going to have, again, minimum trial wave function energy, and that's equal to negative mu times e raised to the power of 4 divided by 12 times pi cubed epsilon naught squared h bar squared. And that's just because 12 is my common um, fraction for these two terms, since all the constants are pretty much the same. And then this final step, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out, I'm going to distribute out a negative 4 over 3 pi. And that'll become clear in a second, but if I distribute out this 4 over 3 pi, then and again inside this bracket I'm going to have mu times e raised to the power of 4. I'm going to have 16 pi squared epsilon naught squared h bar squared.